I recently read The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. Having more money will make you happier if having more money means you have more control over your time. Billionaire Charlie Munger once said, I did not intend to get rich. I just wanted to get independent. If you want to attain the kind of wealth which awards you the freedom to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, you must think differently about money and develop a strong investing psychology. Develop a strong investing psychology by understanding three concepts that most people fail to understand. I call these the three money misunderstandings. Money misunderstanding number one, compounding. If I give you a dollar on January 1st and double it every day after that, $2 on January 2nd, $4 on January 3rd, $8 on January 4th, how much money would I have to give you on January 31st? $1,000? $10,000? Well, if you understand the power of compounding, you know that you stand to make much, much more than $10,000 on January 31st. By compounding $1 at 100% for 31 days, you would receive $1,073,742,000 on January 31st. Congratulations, you just become a billionaire in a month. But if you delayed that game for a week, and didn't start compounding that first dollar until January 8th, how much would you receive on January 31st? 250 million? 100 million? Nope. You would take home just $8 million on January 31st. By waiting a week, you brought home 99% less money. If this doesn't seem intuitive, don't worry. The human mind does not easily grasp the power of compounding. Warren Buffett is regarded as the best investor of all time. Today, he's worth approximately $86 billion. But did you know that nearly $82 billion of his $86 billion was generated after his 65th birthday? Here's a chart of Buffett's wealth over the years. Since Buffett was 11 years old, he has achieved an annual average return of 22%, which is twice as good as the average stock market return. But this 22% average annual return is nothing compared to other investors. Take Jim Simons a mathematician who runs the firm Renaissance Technologies. Simons has achieved 66% returns for the last 33 years. But Simons has just a quarter of the wealth that Buffett has, because Simons, like other investors, have not consistently compounded their wealth for as long as Buffett has. Buffett has more money than other investors because of one primary reason. He's maximized his time in the market to leverage the power of compounding. The first key to building independence level wealth is to start investing now with whatever you can afford, may that be $100 or $10,000, and keep that money invested so you give compounding enough time to work its magic. This advice is simple, but many smart investors fail to follow this advice because they get greedy. Many years ago, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett had another business partner named Rick Guerin. Garen was an investing genius, like Munger and Buffett, but few people know about Garen because when the stock market was soaring in the late 1960s, Garen leveraged his money and used debt to maximize his returns. But when the stock market dropped by 70% in the early 1970s, Garen got margin calls and was forced to sell his stock. Whenever I'm tempted to take on risk and chase a big return in any given year, I just remember that if I'm wrong and lose 50% in one year, I'll need to achieve a 100% return the following year, just to break even. Now, if greed doesn't interrupt your compounding curve, fear probably will. When you watch your stock market portfolio drop by 30% in a market downturn, fear will likely consume you and make you believe that you're going to lose all your money. So you better sell and wait for the market to recover. But know this, in any 20 year period, 100% of people who bought and held the S&P 500 stock market index made money. We all must develop the mental fortitude to weather short-term downturns in order to benefit from long-term uptrends and leverage the power of compounding. To do this, we must correct the second money misunderstanding. Money misunderstanding number two, volatility. Volatility refers to the daily swings in the market. Stocks have high volatility because on any given day, a stock portfolio can be up or down a few percent. People who can't handle the emotional ups and downs of the stock market or other volatile markets invest in low volatility assets 
like treasury bonds and guaranteed investment contracts, to achieve a steady return. But no low volatility asset will outperform a volatile stock market over an extended period. Some investors believe that they can get high annual returns without volatility. That's why several people happily gave millions of dollars to a man on Wall Street who claimed he could generate a steady 1% return each month with no downside risk. That man was Bernie Madoff, a con man who ran a Ponzi scheme and took everyone's money. Volatility is the emotional price you need to pay if you want good annual returns. If you're invested in an index like the S&P 500, which constantly adds growing companies to replace dying companies, you can be confident that the long-term trajectory of that index is up and to the right, regardless of how much volatility the index experiences in any given month or year. But when you log into your trading account and you're down a bunch of money for the day or month, it's hard not to believe that you've done something wrong. Author Morgan Housel offers a great analogy to help you ride out the market dips and embrace volatility. Housel suggests viewing volatility as a fee, not a fine. If you get a fine, like a parking fine, for parking in an illegal spot, you change your behavior and avoid that spot in the future. But if that parking spot required a fee up front, you would pay it and continue parking there, if that spot was the best spot for miles. The same principle applies to investing. If you own an index like the S&P 500, view the volatility and the occasional dip as a fee for being in the market and getting the opportunity to receive high annual returns over an extended period of time. Money misunderstanding number three, tail investments. When Amazon launched the Fire Phone in 2014, it could very well have been a dominant smartphone and doubled Amazon's stock price, but the Fire Phone was a dud. And just a few years after the Fire Phone was launched, CEO Jeff Bezos had to scrap the project and swallow a $170 million loss. But Bezos was unfazed. In an interview after the Fire Phone failure, he said, if you think that's a big failure, we're working on much bigger failures right now. I'm not kidding. Some of them are going to make the Fire Phone look like a tiny little blip. Bezos made hundreds of small bets at Amazon. One of those bets was Amazon Web Services, a small side project that now generates over 60% of Amazon's operating income. Amazon Web Services is a tail investment a single investment that massively outperformed all other investments and made up for several bad investments, like the Fire Phone. Since it's impossible to know which investments will generate huge returns and which will not, it's wise to spread out your bets. Instead of going all in on one investment, make at least 10 equal investments in a diversified group of companies, currencies, commodities, or other assets you think could double in the next five years. Or invest in a big, broad index of companies, like the Russell 3000. Since 1980, nearly 50% of companies in the Russell 3000 have lost value, but the index has provided a 73-fold return thanks to just 7% of companies in the index, like Apple and Amazon, who have done extraordinarily well. As author Morgan Housel likes to say, you can be wrong half the time and still make a fortune. In the end, strengthen your investing psychology by constantly reminding yourself to leverage the power of compounding, embrace volatility, and make many diversified investments to benefit from a few tail investments. Remember Buffett's compounding curve and invest right now to make time your biggest competitive advantage. Remember that 